Very good morning to one and all. This is Dr. Sangeet on behalf of Zodiac Channel. Uh, today uh, we are going to uh, take classes for the BSc Zoology Students Advice Syllabus of 2020-2021 uh, in which we will uh, see the characteristics of uh, protozoans. Protozoan characteristics. So, uh, protozoan uh, characteristics, first we wanted to know the definition for protozoa. So, protozoa can be defined as microscopic, acellular animalcules existing singly or in colonies without tissues and organs having one or more nuclei. That is the definition for protozoa. That is, it can be defined as microscopic, acellular animalcules existing singly or in colonies without tissues and organs having one or more nuclei. Now we'll see the general characteristics of protozoans. First we can say they are generally microscopic animalcules. We can say only through the microscope. Secondly, they are the simplest and primitive of all animals. They'll be having a simple body organization. That is protoplasmic grade of organization. What you mean by protoplasmic grade of organization? Protoplasmic grade of organization. Protoplasmic grade of organization, that is, all the necessary life support and functions, they are carried out by a single cell in the cytoplasm and nucleoplasm, that is called protoplasm. Then, Next point, they are the acellular animals. They are acellular animals without tissues and organs. And next, body is covered by pellicle, but in some forms, the body is covered with scales and they are often provided with internal skeleton. So the third one is the body is covered by pellicle. Then, Protozoans, they are solitary or colonial. In colonial forms, the individuals, they are alike and independent. They are solitary. They can live alone or they may be in uh, colonial forms. So the individuals are alike and independent. Uh, next point, we can say that body shape is variable. Body shape may be variable. Body shape may be variable. How? It will be spherical, embryon spherical or oval, mm, elongated or you can say flattened. So the body shape is variable. It might be spherical, oval, elongated or flattened. Then body protoplasm is differentiated into outer ectoplasm and inner endoplasm. So this protoplasm is you have this ectoplasm and endoplasm. What do you mean by ectoplasm and what is endoplasm? So ectoplasm is what it refers. It is the outer lining of the cytoplasm which is watery and it is adjacent to the plasma membrane. That is ectoplasm. And endoplasm is it refers to the inner dense part of the cells of cytoplasm. That is ectoplasm and endoplasm. Next point we can say that protozoans, as I already told you, they have one or more nuclei. They may be monomorphic or dimorphic. They may be monomorphic or dimorphic. They may be monomorphic or dimorphic. Next we can say the locomotory organelles are by means of false food, that is pseudopodia, flagella, cilia or none. And nutrition may be holozoic, holophytic, saprozoic or parasitic. Let me give you the definition for holozoic. So nutrition is holozoic, holophytic, parasitic or Saprophytic. 
What is holozoic? Holozoic, it is also called a heterotrophic nutrition. It means the food is taken into the body as a liquid or solid and then it is broken down into uh, and then it is broken down. That condition is called it as a holotropic mode of nutrition. If you talk about the holophytic, that is holophytic. Phytic means plant. So this it is it is found in the plants and lower group of animals. So uh, these organisms they obtain energy and the organic building blocks during the they are, they are brought through the photosynthesis. That is holophytic. And talking about the saprozoic, saprozoic means the nutrient substances. They are derived from the dead organic matter. That is saprozoic. Parasitic mode of nutrition is, it is a mode of heterotrophic nutrition where an organism lives on the body surface or inside the body of another type of organism. So these parasites obtain uh, nutrition directly from the body of the host. So that is the uh, nutrition that might be holozoic or holophytic or parasitic or saprophytic. Now we'll talk about the respiration. How is the respiration taking place in uh, protozoans? It is by means of diffusion. Actually, um, the, the that is the protozoans they do not have any organelles for the process of respiration so this uh, this this limiting permeable membrane it will be acting as a respiratory surface can you understand let me repeat again so this respiration is occurring by diffusion through the general body surface they do not that is the protozoans they do not have any organelles for respiration the limiting permeable membrane is acting as a respiratory surface and next we'll talk about the excretion how is the excretion in protozoans? The excretion, it also occurs through the general body surface but in some forms through a temporary opening in the ectoplasm or through a permanent pore called as cytophytes. You call it as cytophytes. So this is the excretion. So it occurs, it also occurs through the general body surface but in some forms through a temporary opening that is the ectoplasm or through a permanent pore, you call it as cytophage. And this contractile vacuoles, they also perform osmoregulation in freshwater form and also helps in removing the excretory products. And we'll talk about the reproduction. So, reproduction is asexual or sexual. They might be asexual or sexual. That is asexual uh, reproduction involves your binary fission, multiple fission, sporulation, budding and the sexual reproduction. Okay. What is binary and multiple fission? So binary and multiple fission, they are the asexual reproduction and they occur within the presence of only one parent. So how can you define binary fission is that the parent cell divides itself into two equal and identical daughter cells that is binary fission and the multiple fission is that a single parent cell is divided into many daughter cells so that is the reproduction it might be asexual or sexual reproduction and talking about the life cycle the life cycle often exists that is alternation of generation that is it includes asexual and sexual phases that is the life cycle and lastly, we can say that encystment. Encystment occurs to the tide over the unfavorable condition. That is, the single cell body or protozoa performs all the vital activities of life and no physiological division of labor is exhibited by them. So I hope you understood the contents of the characteristic features of protozoans, the general characteristics. In my uh, next class, let me talk about uh, uh, some uh, protozoan uh, uh, characters with the, I mean, protozoan classification with the orders, with examples will be dealt in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Have a nice day.